Yeah, is that really clear, though? Joining me now, former OMB director and former White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. Mick, really good to see you. I'll get your reaction to the president's comments. Is his economic plan working? Yeah, Brian, thanks for having me. I saw that same clip, and I kept asking myself, a couple of things. First of all, what is the economic plan? Because as right. best I can tell, it's just spending a bunch more money, and I'm not sure how that would solve inflation. But then I also remember back to a year ago when Biden was saying inflation wasn't his fault in the first place. And I guess what I would tell him is, Mr. President, you can't have it both ways. You can't not be responsible for inflation going up, but then be responsible for inflation going down. Either the two things happen mm -hmm. without you or with you. Again, it's not unusual for a politician to try and take credit for stuff he's not responsible for, but it is just sort of absurd to get up there and say, my economic plan is working when he doesn't really have an economic mm. plan other than spending a lot more money. So let's talk about inflation because we did get a number today that came in a little bit below expectations. It's getting better. Consumer inflation, at least according to the numbers, is getting better. Now, I'd say people going to the grocery store are still having a hard time affording the things that they used to be able to afford. But it seems to be getting better, yet that inflation number still has a seven in front of it. That's a problem, Mick. How do you read where inflation is going and what kind of optimism do you have, if any, that that number could get back to normal levels even as early as next year? Yeah, I'll deal with that last question first. I I'm not optimistic, and I, I want to be, but as a budget guy, I guess by nature, I'm a little bit pessimistic just because I look at the fundamentals. What caused inflation in the first place? Too much spending, too much government spending, and not enough new goods caused by a variety of things. The war in Ukraine, supply chain difficulties, COVID here, but also government policies. A little bit of that is changing. The supply chain is getting a little. Uh, supply chain is getting a little bit better, but that's about it. The rest of the fundamentals still point towards inflation. And keep in mind, as you noted, Brian, the only reason we're really sort of excited about seven percent inflation is that it's not nine percent inflation. <laughs> it's only supposed to be two. Um, now keep waiting for the Biden team to come out. Keep in mind, about a couple months ago, when inflation was eight percent in a row, eight uh, percent two months in a row, they said there was no inflation. So since mm. it's gone from seven. Uh, from nine to seven, I keep wondering if they come out tonight and say there's deflation. Again, they, they don't really understand the numbers. But no, I'm not optimistic long term because the fundamentals, what's causing inflation in the first place, yeah. haven't changed. Let's talk, but you're the budget guy. Let's talk budget because we've got rising interest rates. The Fed almost certainly is going to raise again this week another half percentage point. That is a big problem for the federal budget and the costs that we pay to service our debt. And I don't think this gets nearly enough attention, but you know this. Talk about what effect these higher interest rates are having on this massive debt we've had. And we've had it for a long time, but the low interest rate environment has kept interest payments down. That's changing in a big way right now. Yeah, back, uh, look at it this way. Back at the beginning of the Trump term, I think our debt was about $25 trillion and our borrowing costs were about 2%. That means we had to pay about $500 million in interest. It was a little bit less than that for a variety of reasons, but that's ballpark for sake of this discussion. Now you're looking at three, $31 trillion. Let's call it 30 because the math is easier. And if you're borrowing that at 5% even, just a little bit more than we used to. That's a that's a trillion and a half dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, those are huge numbers. They're much more than we spend on defense, for example, much more than we spend on everything other than Social Security and Medicare, so, and uh, Medicaid. So the, that, that interest, the amount of our income, the, the, the monthly income, the annual income that we have as a country, the percentage of that, the chunk of that is going to go to interest payments is just going up and up, leaving either less money for other things or more borrowing to cover the those other things, which leads then to more interest payments. So you're in a vicious cycle, and the spending has got to stop, and Biden's certainly not doing that. That's the price Americans pay for a government that can never live within its means. And it's just money out the door to debt holders all over the globe. Really quickly, Mick, I just want to talk about your expectations for rate increases. We're going to see a half point probably this week from the Fed. What do you expect in 2023? How much higher do you think rates are going to have to go? Yeah, I'm still banking on a couple more, maybe, you know, 50 basis points. I don't think you'll see a, a full percentage point. We haven't seen that yet. I don't think you'll see 75 percent again, just because I think they're going to wait and see. But I think they're probably here for at least um, the next year. Keep in mind, like you mentioned at the outset, yes, we're down from nine to seven on an annualized basis, but the goal is two. So we're still a long way from, mm. from, from being there. So I think you're going to look at continued increases over the course of the next year. I do think there's a limit 
Brian, on what they can do because of the impact on the federal budget. I don't think they can raise rates to 14 or 16 percent like they did in the 1970s because that would literally bankrupt the federal government. Yeah. So there are limits on what the Fed can do. Um, they will continue to raise interest rates because it's the only thing they know how to do. It's not going to create any more stuff. It's not going to solve the supply chain problems. The government could be helping with that. It's not. But you ask me what the Fed is going to do. They're going to yeah. raise rates because it's the only tool they know they have. They've got one tool. It works a little bit, but it has nothing to do with the supply side of the economy, and that's going to become the issue into 2023. Mick, we got to leave it there. Always Thanks. good to see you. Thanks for being with us.